Okay, this should be a pretty easy one. We're gonna take a look at the surface area and volume of a cone. Now, cones are actually a much easier shape. We don't have a whole lot that we have to deal with here. Just remember that a cone um, has a radius because its base is a circle. It has a height, of course, we could do that. And then this L right here stands for its slant height. So turns out um, there's a proof of this, but I'm not gonna go ahead and go through that uh, entirely. But when you wanna find the surface area of a cone, you would wanna start with pi r squared, which of course is the base value, the area of that base, plus we want to talk about the lateral area, which is that slanted part that we have. And that's a really strange little formula. This is what I was saying. There is a proof of it. I don't think it's worth going through that with you right now. Just trust me on the fact, strangely enough, is just pi times the radius times the slant height, which is really kind of a cool little formula. And of course, the volume kind of goes back to the uh, idea of any kind of a pyramid-based shape, that it is one-third the uh, area of that base multiplied by the height, um, which is exactly what we used in the previous video. But remember, the base is a circle, so it's one-third pi r squared with an h. Very, very simple little idea. So... You always, of course, have to have a couple of pieces of data that is there. So let's suppose that I told you um, this piece right here was, let's say, four inches, and let's say the slant height was um, so something like seven inches. Not that it really matters that much. We could use the Pythagorean theorem to say that four squared plus h squared is seven squared. <clears throat> We're looking at 16 and 49, so we have h squared is 33, so h is the square root of 33. Now again, that's not a nice number, but that's pretty typical for these kind of problems. So if we're looking for the surface area, first thing we should do is go ahead and find our base, and our base is pi r squared. So that'd be pi times four squared, or 16 pi inches squared. Well, that makes it pretty nice because then the surface area would simply be um, pi r squared, which we already found, 16 pi plus pi r l, which is 7. Uh, 4 times 7, of course, is 28. Add that to the 16 pi that we already found for our base, and we're at 44 pi square inches which again, sometimes it's nice to go ahead and uh, get an approximation of that, but here we go, 44 pi would be about 138.2 square inches. That's great, no big deal. But uh, what we could do then is we could leverage that a little bit further and then say that the volume is one third that base times that height, but I've already found that that base is 16 pi and the height is root 33. And quite literally, we're done right there. We could walk away from the problem right now because it's a very crazy, irrational value. But of course, that doesn't feel comfortable to most people. So most people would take a moment and finish that out. So if we took 16 pi and divided it by 3 and then multiplied that by the square root of 33, there we are, we're at 96.25 inches cubed. Cool, there we've got ourselves our volume of our cone, and we've got our surface area of a cone. Now, of course, sometimes we might be a little bit mean to you and ask you to do something a little bit harder. So imagine, if we will, that I started with something a little bit different. And let's say I told you that I knew that the radius of my given cone was something like five centimeters, but I told you that the volume of my cone is, say, 115 uh, centimeters cubed. But that's all I told you. So notice that what I failed to give you is the height or the slant height, but I just told you how much liquid fits in it. So what I like to do is I just have to trust what I know the volume should be one-third pi r squared h. Now, I did give you the radius, which is nice. And I also gave you the volume, which is 115 
And that means I could actually peel my way backwards and find the height. So let's see, the first thing I would do is I wanna get rid of this three right here. So since I'm multiplying by a third, also known as dividing by three, let's times by three. So 345. And this would be 25 pi h. So I'm now going to divide both sides by 25 pi. And I'm gonna put that 25 pi in parentheses, otherwise my calculator will not understand what I meant. And I just found my height was approximately 4.39, again, centimeters. Well, I'm not gonna keep going too much on this because if you notice that we have that, we could use the Pythagorean theorem to say that 4.39 squared plus five squared would be our slant height squared. So let's see, that one squared plus five squared, and then I would need to take the square root of that value. Let's see, the square root of that answer. And I got that the slant height is 6.66 .66 centimeters. Now I'm actually gonna stop and not go any further there, but if you think through what we now know, based on having a little bit of data, I now have the slant height, I have the regular height, I have the radius, which means I could leverage that to find the surface area or the lateral area or any other piece that I need for a cone. Cones are relatively easy to deal with. Hopefully that's helpful and I will see you back in class. Goodbye, bye-bye.